Hey everybody, it's Tea Time with the Diva. Grab your tea, grab your coffee, because we're going to get into it. This Tea Time is dedicated to James Brown. It's dedicated to James Brown. Why? Because they have a docu-series that is currently on the A&E channel, and it already aired. It aired Monday and Tuesday. It's a four-part docu-series, but you can on-demand it if you have cable. I still have cable. OK, because listen, at the end of the day, you're going to have cable on 99 streaming systems. And by the time you finish paying for all of those streaming systems, you might as well have cable. But anywho, I still have cable and I did not. I started watching it. It's pretty good so far and I have to continue. But I'm coming to you with this tea time because it seems like, unfortunately, there are a lot of men in the world. But there are a lot of men in the entertainment world who seems to have a problem with putting their hands on their significant others. And, you know, it's always that question of do we separate the man from his work, from his talent, from his art? And we almost have to, right? Or else we will listen to nothing, participate in nothing, and be able to go see not one single person. And why do I say that? You know, nobody wants to talk about it, but they say this, that, you know, Michael Jackson had a dark side. You got R. Kelly that has a dark side. You have P. Diddy that has a dark side. And just out of those individuals that I named, they created some great work that you know has been celebrated for decades, but at the end of the day, they got a dark side. So do we no longer listen to their music or participate in any art that they did or anything once we find out that in their personal life, said person has a dark side? So in this docu-series, his daughters participate in it. Two of his daughters, he has a lot of children. And listen, James Brown grew up extremely poor. He had old with a life. His parents divorced and his aunt took care of him. He supposedly grew up in a brothel at 15. He got arrested for breaking into cars and actually got sentenced. I want to say that eight to 10 years in jail and got out after three. So he grew up on the rough side. But my thing is, when you have a troubled beginning, does that give you an excuse to be a terror the rest of your life? No, I think you should seek counseling. So back to the matter at hand, James Brown had a problem putting his hands on significant others, and he also had a problem putting his hands on men that worked for him. He, didn't, he was an equal opportunity, put your hands on the people. If he got pissed off and he got enraged, he got to using those hands in a not so nice way. Listen guys, we're gonna get more into this James Brown story right after this. share screen oh that's not the one i want to show stop that one second there we go all right so james brown's daughters explains how they forgave him for abusing wife dj jenkins which is their mother okay time to show grace and, and, you know, I get it. He's no longer here. You can't keep holding on to the past. But I understand the mother for saying, I don't want to participate in this docuseries because I don't have the same experience that y'all had with your father. 
Deanna Brown Thomas and Yama Brown, two of James Brown's daughters, got candid about forgiving their father after witnessing him abuse their mom, Deidre Jenkins. When you see a family member being hurt, you're not feeling the best about the person that's hurting them, Yama 52 told people in a new interview published Tuesday. I was flat out upset, mad with my dad at that moment. I still go back to that place every now and then, not to belittle my dad, but flashing back over my own life in a DV situation in my life, thinking how much of that shaped me. Yama, who also opened up about the abuse in a four-part docuseries about her dad's life and career titled James Brown, Say It Loud, said she was around six years old the last time she saw the I Got You, I Feel Good musician abuse her mom, and she intervened. Imagine as a young daughter, you got to go and try to stop your dad from beating up your mom. I talk about it in the sense that it happened. It's an unfortunate time in anybody's situation, anybody's life, she is playing. If they ever had to go through DV, they know what that's like. And it shows that, that he was human because he was flawed. But it is also a time to show grace. The cold sweat, my father's James Brown and me, Often said she had to acknowledge the abuse happened in order to move on from that space. Deanna 55 told people that she didn't like James growing up due to his behavior towards his second wife. There was a time when I didn't like my father, she confessed. I didn't like him because of the type of behavior. I saw a lot growing up. I heard a lot growing up that could have damaged me for a lifetime. However, she said the dad of nine never abused his kids. He never had any type of rage towards us because we were his children, Deanna shared. That was a situation between a husband and a wife. There's a different type of love, different type of circumstances. Jenkins and Brown tied the knot in October 1970 and divorced in 1981. She has mostly stayed out of the limelight following their split. The papa's got a brand new bag singer, went on to wed his third wife, Adrian Rodriguez, in 1984. During that marriage, James was arrested several times for DV. Oh. James, also known as the Godfather of Soul, died of congestive heart failure caused by pneumonia in 2006. He was 73. James Brown, Say It Loud, premieres, it premiered already on Monday and Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a and &E. Like I said, you can still on demand it. I started watching it. It's pretty good. It's really interesting. It's interesting because like I said, this man for the time that he was doing music and coming into the music industry, so to speak, he was a genius in the sense that he wanted to own all his stuff. He wanted to do everything himself. He wanted a live band at his concerts because he really wanted to put on a show. And people from the streets taught him how to play instruments. So he kind of grew up on the rough side, but he learned a lot. He did a lot. And when it came to his work, the ultimate, well, I mean, when it came to his work, he was perfection in giving a performance to the people. But he was a little terror. And with the way he demanded stuff from the people. He needed some balance. But may he rest in peace. Like I said, I started watching the docket series. Very interesting, really good. It's on the a and &E channel if you have cable. Listen, guys, chat with me in the comments. And when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. Can we separate someone's work life, so to speak, from their personal life? Because if we got into all our personal lives, we all probably might be canceled for one situation or thing or another. Chat with me. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe with the notification bell set so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. If you are a subscriber, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for watching. Listen, guys, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next video.